What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy. We back here with another reaction for y'all. And we back with another Luesta video. And we got the creepy billionaires, creepy billionaire rappers that sell their soul to Michael Rubin. And basically, <laughs> it's basically like this. First of all, as you see by the thumbnail that's behind me, that's crazy. Michael Rubin huggy, hugging little baby like that with that type of expression on little baby's face. That's insane. And then with the Twitter saying, the white Diddy. Hey. <laughs> and if you know about Diddy, you know what situation his ass is in. <laughs> That's crazy and such. But yeah, you always see that whenever it comes to all the celebrity, all the like, whether it be rappers or celebrities, no matter who it is. They always go into that all white party for Michael Rubin now. Honest to God, I didn't even knew about Michael Rubin. I don't even, I never knew about Michael Rubin, but knowing that he's famous and he's always having these, y'all gotta clue, clue me in on what does he do and such. And like, what is, I know he's famous, but what, what, what was he, but what he's famous for? Let me know. But whenever there's always his, but he's always bring doing these in annual I'm guessing white parties and such and just recently he had one you always seen some of the celebrities and rappers and such that you would never think would go where go there and people be saying it's a little bit I mean hell just looking at those photos from when Lil Baby with that and like that exact photo like I was talking about as you see behind me with Lil Baby having <laughs> Michael Rubin hug him like that in the back and I saw that hell 50 cents saw that at one point 50 cents saying about how little baby needed to call him up and such because what they doing to you and all that so hey I don't know what be going on in them parties so it is one of the same way how we don't know what be going on in them freak out parties them diddy parties I don't know what goes on in them parties but regardless let's see what Luisa's take on this is about so we about to check this out. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on my old. Follow me on my socials up there. And without further ado, let's get into this. Sorry for the long intro. I don't know, Michael. But a lot of times, the nerdy whites, they want to partner up with the kids at the cool table. Snoop told a story one time when he said the dudes from um, Uber was with Suge. And they begged Suge to come introduce them to Snoop. These dudes be going to see Capital. I just want to be around Kevin Durant. I want to be around Nas. I want to be around all of these cool people that I grew up on. I was the nerdy dude. Now I got enough money to, to mesh with them. Everyone knows that money rules the world and the rap game is no exception to that rule. But the puppet master behind many iconic artists is a truly sinister and creepy man. <laughs> Michael Rubin is an industry tycoon and his name really started circulating along with this embarrassing clip of gangster rap Meek Mill, as some of you may recall, where bro was literally bunny hopping like an absolute psychopath on camera. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. And it's slowly coming to. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that clip. Why the hell is you supposed to be a gangster rapper and you let no nigga. How you gonna talk about you was from the streets of Philly and such? To bunny hopping? What the hell? Like, nigga. Huh? This is what I be saying. I don't know what be going on in these types of parties or whatnot, but what the fuck is this? This kind of like ruins your street cred when you got a nigga bunny hopping like this. Like, what the hell? You got your ass to keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. And it's slowly coming to light that he is your favorite rapper's favorite billionaire, orchestrating a large network of young black talents across hip hop and even sports. Even the likes of 50 Cent have been seen clowning rappers close to Michael Rubin. From the outside it's looking in, it seems like a pretty good idea to associate yourself with a billionaire, as there are countless benefits being tied to such wealth. But the quote unquote benefits that Michael Rubin comes with tend to be questionable at best. Don't be making fun of me when I'm drunk, you're gonna get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says, you're getting a drunken hug. You too. 
You two drunk and hugs are coming tonight. It's your boy Luesta, and today we're gonna unpack the unsettling hold that Michael hmm. Rubin has on hip hop culture. That's but crazy. before we get ahead of ourselves, we gotta understand his origins in the world of hip hop and the power that he holds outside of the game that you'll see extends farther than anyone really knows. With 11 big B's to his name, it's hard to imagine Damn. Michael Rubin ever starting off with humble beginnings, but that's exactly how the story goes. Like many kids, he started shoveling snow when he was only 8 years old, and by the time he was 12, he had a ski repair shop that eventually raked in 125k a year. His keen eye for business carried into adulthood, and perhaps his most important money move came in an early investment with Fanatics, the top sports merchandise company in the entire world. This wasn't a one off expense though. Ruben loved sports, and he eventually was inspired to purchase the Philadelphia 76ers and became its most popular owner, despite sharing the team with several others. And it was courtside at a Philly game where he met the gangster rapper Meek Mill, fresh off the scene after coming up with moving and raw bars like these. Some summer nights can even turn cold. In the streets of Philly where Nick don't even get to turn old. My heart pumping to a turn gold. The two men were from completely different worlds but they would end up having far more in common than one would expect. And they would begin to bond over sports, business, and more. As conversation continued, no one would expect the can of worms that was about to burst open from this single interaction. And it would change the course of modern rap entirely. So my daughter was just talking to Nikki, and Meek's like, you know, in his way, he's like, who are you? I'm like, you know, the Sixers guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then within a second, the, what I loved about Meek from the, from the moment I met him, he just started peppering me with business questions. Like, hey, if I want to do this, how would you do, do that? And if I want to do this in sports, and if I want to put this deal together. In a lot of ways, he was a similar version of me from a completely different environment. They I mean... But it's basically like this. It's not only with you who you would do it with, it's anybody else. Because think about it. At the end of the day, with the music industry or just entertainment industry in general, yeah, you can make acquaintances, friends along the way. You can. But at the end of the day, business is business. So sometimes they be wanting to learn your tricks so that way they can do it too and get them to the billions and such. Because... People would want to stop at M's, but they want that they want them B's. And I ain't talking about bloods. I'm talking about them billionaires, nigga. They continued to meet a few times as a friendship was truly like beginning this, to form. Though. And in their talks, Ruben would eventually learn about Meek Mill's ongoing legal struggle. One night, maybe we'd hung out at the games maybe 10 times. And we were at halftime. And I'll remember this for the rest of my life. I said, um, hey, you, you, I'm going with some friends to the Borgata afterwards. You want to come? He said, I'm not allowed. I'm like, do you need permission from your mom? It's literally what I said to him. I said, do you need permission from your mom? I was joking. I was being a wise ass. Yeah, yeah. He's like, no, I'm on probation. I'm like, how's this probation thing work? He's like, I'm not allowed to leave. You can't go across the bridge. 10 minutes. He's like, I'm not allowed. I'll get arrested. I'm like, I'm like what'd you do again? You see, Meek Mill was under serious pressure from a 2007 incident involving a case where he was locked up for illegal fire and possession. He got two years behind bars plus five years probation, and when his probation period was supposed to expire, a hard-ass judge continued to hold him on a legal leash. And things would not change for him as he grew older, even though his rap career was flourishing. In 2017, Meek picked up more probation charges for popping Will and getting mixed up in an airport brawl, violating his current restrictions. And when Michael heard about his new friend's struggle and realized it was a problem on the judge's end, he decided to step in. I'm not gonna say who I called. I started calling people of importance to find out is everything he's telling me true? Like, I was hearing like, all I was hearing was everyone loves him, but he's got this crazy judge. But you know what? I want to make sure I, I'm just, I'm always on guard. If you're, if you're in my situation, you're always. And so I kept getting back. He's done everything he's been asked from a probation perspective. You know, he's well liked. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's even late, a little bit on rap time sometimes, but this is a good guy. You know, he's doing lots of charitable things. I wrote this letter, which became, I never thought it would become public. It became very public. I wrote this letter and basically talked about my relationship with him. I basically said, like, look, this has become one of my closest friends. Like, you know, he knows my daughter well, he knows my mom, you know, he knows, you know, all of my, you know, partners in the Sixers. Despite Ruben's letter and his appearance in court during the hearing, the judge still sentenced Meek to two to four years in prison. This was a shocking verdict considering everyone involved had strongly recommended against prison time, including the parole officer. It was abundantly clear that the judge had a vendetta against the young Philly native, but... That w hey, 
Some judge will be like that. That even though you see a whole lot of people, especially if you have a rap career, even if you have this whole fan base behind you, and even one of the most important people in like the entertainment business, like a Michael Rubin, sticking out for you and such, trying to help you out in this case, even though he's helping you out. People, some people who's in authority, especially when they determine if you are live, when it, it determines if you got your freedom or not, so that way you don't go to jail, they could have a grudge. That's why sometimes don't fuck with people. Even if, even if I never think Meek Mill with the judge, still, certain people you just don't want to F with. Considering everyone involved had strongly recommended against prison time, including the parole officer. It was abundantly clear that the judge had a vendetta against the young Philly native, but lucky for Meek, he had a billionaire friend in his corner of the ring. I literally, I look at Meek and he always wants to be Mr. Tough Guy. His eyes turn pink, you know, there's tears coming out of his eyes. I, like, I, I can't remember the last time anything made me tear up. I have tears coming out of my eyes and I looked at him and I'm like, I will not stop until you're out of prison and she's off the bench. And that's exactly what he sought out to do, pouring over $6 million alongside Jay-Z to hire the best investigators and lawyers to fight for Meek's freedom. And to Millie, it meant the world. You're now sitting in an orange jumpsuit and you're still smiling from ear to ear. I don't get it. Like he said, if it were me, I'd be so mad. How are you happy? Meek sat there, thought about it for like a minute. He said, Robert, I've been sent to prison three times for never committing a crime. This is my entire life. I've been in and out, out of this thing my entire life. This is the first time people are fighting for me. You're here to see me today. You know, Michael's been here 20 times. There's a crusade to free me. This is the first time that's happened. All that effort was worth it in the end, as the judge would eventually get revealed to be super corrupt, even beyond the courtroom. Aside from multiple weird cases on her end, she was also secretly spying on Meek and even demanded he drop her name in a song. Some pretty strange behavior. But the real win in all this was for Michael Rubin, who was quickly being hailed as a model billionaire and culture icon. He kept riding this wave when he established a reform alliance with Jay-Z to combat legal system failures. He said, we're gonna get a million people that are on probation or parole that shouldn't be on, out of the system. There's, there was four and a half million people at the time. This is three and a half years ago. We've already cleared a pathway for 650,000 people that are Dang, hold on. on probation or parole to get out earlier from the laws that we've changed. Michael. Damn. That just shows you sometimes with the system, it be fucked. Cause some, cause the fact that when he said Meek Mill was in jail, when Meek said that he was in jail numerous times and three of the times where he went to jail he was never committed a crime but he just went to jail like that I'm like nigga if that don't shows you sometimes the system ain't corrupt especially on somebody of art my color if that don't shows you that sometimes the system is corrupt I don't know what does and with with Luister just saying about how that judge was corrupt even beyond the courtroom, nigga. If that don't show, if that don't prove to you it's not corrupt, then I don't want what does. That shouldn't be on out of the system. There's, there was four and a half million people at the time. This is three and a half years ago. We've already cleared a pathway for six hundred fifty thousand people that are on probation and parole to get out earlier from the laws that we've changed. Michael Rubin was officially a hip hop namesake, and the idea of having a rich white billionaire friend started sounding real good to young up and coming artists, especially this genuine caring dude. Let's keep this real. When you're financially successful, it's easy to give money away, okay? True. I give lots of money away, that's easy. What's hard is to do the work. But it wouldn't take long for the more sinister intentions of the richest man in rap to emerge from the most unseeming shadows. And it was too late for those that flocked to him. The friendship with Lil Baby, what was it about him and your guys' uh, rapport that sort know, of connected to him? Guy. He's a great guy. Baby is absolutely one of the best human beings in the planet. There's never been a thing I've asked him to help with, like from a charitable perspective, with the Reform Alliance. There's never been anything. He's just such a great human being. I love his work ethic. When you hear his story, and I, again, I don't know anything about music. So when I met him the first time with Drake in the Bahamas in 2020, 
And he's telling me a story about, you know, he was in ch ch jail a couple years earlier. He never rapped, and now he's got this great, you know, kind of music career. Do you just want to root for the guy? Ruben's new influence pulled in big names. Lil Baby, Travis Scott, and Quavo, to name a few. Successful people hang out. It made sense at the time, especially given Michael's recent investment into Meek Mill. But a noticeable pattern began to emerge in these relationships that made people question his intentions. Why are you doing bunny hops, Meek? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. Count out loud. Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your bunny hops. They suck. Your bunny hops suck. You got 250 more to go. Super weird dynamic. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. What the fuck? But... Still on Meek Mill though, granted, it is weird at how he switched from trying to support the guy, love the guy and all that, but then with a weird thing like this though, like, you making a grown man bunny hopping and such, or even if he lost it, even if it was the rules of the t game or whatnot, still though, why bunny hopping, and the way how he sounds though when he's saying about how don't cheat like don't cheat on your buddy hops that like what it's like nigga huh even if you beat me in a certain game cool but nigga i'm not about to do no damn uh, bunny hops okay you beat me but the fuck count out loud keep going keep going don't cheat on your buddy hops they suck your buddy hops suck you got 250 more to go Super weird dynamic, and the internet exploded when they saw what was going on. Bro, this is some house slave type sh Damn near! I'm gonna hop for you, Massa. When he lost, he went straight to hopping too. Man, the rap game is nothing but a modern day plantation. I discussed the situation in much more- Not a modern day plantation, that's crazy. <laughs> but I mean, that first comment where it says this is on some house slave type shit, I mean- Nigga, if he's t like, nigga, if that don't say it, then I don't know what does. The rap game is nothing but a modern day plantation. I discussed the situation in much more detail in my video about how Meek Mill destroyed his career. But one takeaway from that video is that this was all weird behavior for a man like Meek Mill. A respected street artist who really portrays the image of a gangster, it just felt really weird for him to do something like this. That's and what due I'm to saying. all the negative publicity he was receiving, Meek Mill tried to explain that this was a game played in prison. But of course, that only got him flamed even more. Oh hell no. I don't ever I don't believe that for once a game played. So you need to tell me there was a game in prison called Bunny Hop. Yeah, I wonder why they fl <laughs> Cause I I don't care what you say, no matter what games they be wanting to play I don't know what games they be playing in prison. But one thing's for sure I know they don't play is no damn game called Bunny Hop. The fuck? Due to all the negative publicity he was Bunny receiving, Meekmo tried to explain that this was a game played in prison. But of course, that only got him flamed even more. Nigga, really? If someone tweeted really, how much did they pay you to do this? This is the first time he's addressed it. Keep in mind, there's all these Diddy rumors about Meek. There's this, what I believe to be a fake audio about Meek and Diddy engaging in some wrestling for the cereal like he used to do with them. <laughs> like he said he used to... People have this assumption that Meek is doing zestivities with Diddy or potentially <laughs> nigga I, and I heard that audio if anyhow Luesta plays this audio I can't Luesta for the love of God I hope when I click play you better not play the audio you better not play the audio Game. I don't believe that. So he says, this is a game I started from prison. We used to make killers do bunny hops when they lost because it was too hostile for money. A YouTube channel, the link. This be us. I'm gonna get Ruben to bunny hop for me, okay? LOL, I'm gonna teach him D thang hop. I don't even know what half of this means. The fact that he said, we used to do this in prison and we used to make killers do bunny hops. This is one of those things where if Meek was right next to me and showed me the phone, anybody really, I'm looking at him like, dog, that is not what you want to send out. You used to make killers do bunny hops. What? What? What are you talking about? And then I'm going to get Ruben to bunny hop. And this is the thing. Him getting Michael Ruben to bunny hop for him has no effect on Michael Ruben. Most people don't even know Michael Ruben is the owner of the company that he owns. The clip. That's what I was saying. Like, I didn't know who was Michael Ruben at one point. Now, that, that I'm learning about is not. But 
before all I know about him was that he was rich and he's his billionaire and he always made do these like all white parties and such that was the only time I know about him so even if he would have done the bunny hops it wouldn't affect him because nobody because like he said no nobody's gonna know who Michael Rubin is they know that he's rich and all that he's a billionaire but they really don't know who he is or what he was rich off of and what not but to see me do that oh nigga that they fun out they were I know they was roasting the hell out of me on Michael Rubin most people don't even know Michael Rubin is the owner of the company that he owns the clip of him doing bunny hops got so much attention that it resurfaced amid the Diddy allegations a while back as well to make matters worse, this wasn't an isolated incident, as Lil Baby was another rapper who was a victim of one of Ruben's house bets that caught people's attention, the and not for a good reason. What's the bet? I got a six braids. Six braids coming off your head. Six braids off the back of your head if you fall asleep from 5pm until 4 a.m. My entire head. Bet. Bets between friends aren't unheard of. But the eerie part of all of this is that we never even seen Ruben lose. It leads us to ask questions like, is Lil Baby really gonna get into Ruben's bed and shave his hair? And if Meek lost that bet to anyone else, is he really letting his homies post the video online? The answer is obvious, and no. the truth becomes crystal clear when we see Kanye, one of the most high self-esteemed humans to ever this walk earth at this point, get talked down and demeaned on a post. So this is what really happens with Peter, TV, Kanye. What we do on our way to a Vogue event, ribs and french fries. So, what does Ruben have to say about all this? Well, he will tell you that these are all mutually beneficial relationships, and the business mogul knows he can get to these successful artists for tips and ideas as well. You were asking about Baby before, like, you know, does he come to me for advice? He comes to me for business advice all the time, but I go to him for advice on stuff too. I'll ask him like, hey, will this, you know, is this a good idea or a bad, bad idea? While this could be true, the real benefit for Ruben, besides whatever freaky stuff is going on behind <laughs> closed doors, is the marketing leverage that hip hop super stars give him and his companies and rather than being a pushover guy paying these rappers to be around and do his bidding it really seems like ruben is the guy calling the shots even in this incident with meek mill on a private jet mike get up off me dog you heard me mike get up off me man look this man on my legs y'all get this man don't be making fun of me when i'm drunk you're gonna get another drunken hug tonight i don't care what anyone says you're hey, getting yo. a drunken hug you too you two drunk and hugs are coming tonight. This isn't all speculation either, as we seem to utilize a culture. Fresh and fit, where you at? Just <laughs> like Lobby. Don't let Myron's. Hey, all I'm gonna say is if you want Myron to give, there's a certain person who who is known for wanting to get hugged by another white dude. So call him. This isn't all speculation either, as we've seen him utilize a culture shifter like Lil Baby to promote his fanatics gear on the track Merch Madness, a campaign where tons of merchandise was given out to fans. These rappers were playing chess, but Michael Rubin had them in checkmate from the beginning, pulling rappers into business endeavors and still capitalizing on their influence. His use of rappers as pawns is enough to make you speculate his intentions, but the real red flag begins to dissolve whenever we look at his more elevated social life specifically his strange white parties. You gotta investigate this Michael Rubin party a little bit first. That's what Y'all don't think it's a little strange? What? <laughs> what? Help me out. The what consistency was... of the A-list celebrities that go there. The, the hugging. The what strategy? other party in the universe do you see that many of that level A-list people at the same spot at the same time? This annual Michael Rubin white party isn't what it sounds like, but might just be as strange and worth investigating, and most of all, disturbing in its name. Nature. This high profile gala is littered with every A list person on the planet. Even people far outside of Ruben's circle will show out for what is possibly the biggest elite social event every single year. We're talking like it's crazy. Like, look at look at what this nigga Jack Harlow's wearing. Like, what the fuck? Why would you be wearing that to a party? I mean, if it's your style, it's your style, but I'm just saying, kind of weird. 
I think Tom Brady to Jay Z, Kevin Hart to Kim Kardashian, even Drake was recently seen there. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro was absolutely done with everything happening to him lately. Basically, anyone considered an elite society is invited and most certainly attends these packed parties. Of course, the first assumptions from outsiders were Illuminati comparisons, I and did. some even pointed to Ruben himself as the leader. There's even an eerie resemblance to this crowd in Jared Leto's cult. To even be considered for an invite, you have to be at the top of the famous profiles. So it makes sense that anyone would want to show out. But what's strange is the presence of guys like Baby, Quavo, and Meek, who are all far below the status of these other guests. And plus, you gotta realize, that's even so with celebrities and such, there's certain type of people there. The, I would expect like the celebrities, like a basketball player or whatever and such. But when you're getting rappers with the likes of them three, what he just called, Quavo, Meek Mill, and such, Lil Baby and such, these niggas are, at the end of the day, they were street niggas before, the, they were street niggas before they ever became these famous rappers, and then they became the very famous rappers, but still kept that ghetto in them. So it's kind of weird that they go into parties like this, because not to hate on their type of creativity, not to hate on their whole thing and such, but when you're looking at that whole entire party and you see like A-list, A-list celebrities, right? Not saying that those three ain't A-list, because obviously they got their status, but I'm just saying, there's, there's levels to when it comes to this celebrity type shit. You got, we, we everybody knows that, so it's kind of weird that you have that hell Drake is more of an A-list and such celebrity than those three. Let's be honest. So guys like Baby, Quavo, and me, who are all far below the status of these other guests. Their attendance seems a little bit out of place, and questions got raised, especially when they found themselves in more questionable scenarios at the hands of my That this this one I'm saying, this right here, this picture right here. Why the hell does th why the hell does this nigga have him like this? Trust me, when this picture came out, boy, when I looked at them comments from when this picture came out, they was going at little baby. One and like I said at the start of this video, one in particular, Fifty Cent had to retweet this saying, "What the fuck are they doing in those parties?" This one and Diddy. So hey, that white Diddy right there. You kind of see it. <laughs> Michael Rubin. Now, what in the f is this? Ain't no fucking way. These motherfuckers now, got him thing. in a reverse Oreo and he's showing all teeth. That guy, Michael Rubin, he needs culture. I listened to him on a podcast and all he talked about was trying to sell to culture. Well, here's the thing. You having a billion dollars don't matter if he's don't fuck with you. So what is it in your benefit to do? Be friends. Be friend the hottest, like throw the best parties. Who knows how much money? He probably lost millions off this party. With the Diddy party activities coming to light, it's no surprise that people are beginning to question what goes on at the Michael Rubin estate. With culture floating around the Puff Circle just 20 years ago, the same strange occurrences seem to be unfolding around a 51-year-old billionaire, especially given his relationships with the top of hip-hop. And now we're left to wonder why what lies ahead seems both familiar and uncertain. Yo, what the f- I didn't see That says Ruben on his underwear, yo! I just noticed that! Yo, Michael Ruben got the hoes! Is that real? Yeah! Yo, that's crazy. Yo, is that real? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. God damn, bro! Yeah, Michael got a- Michael Ruben got a chokehold on this shit. Like, I ain't seen somebody have a chokehold on this shit in a long time. Ain't no freaking way. To have somebody have freaking Ruben on they- Hey, shout out to Lil Wayne to give a little like right there. Great video by the man. Y'all better make sure y'all subscribe to him and such. Because trust me, he be popping these out like fire and such. But yeah. Like I, been, like I said. <laughs> from all them times with the Diddy parties and now with Michael Rubin. Hey, man. All that just says is to stay away from certain parties like them too <laughs> cuz 
nigga. What? The only type of all white I need to see is when you're marrying a girl. If you're marrying in your fem your companion. Otherwise, I don't want to go to any party that's like this. Cause, cause the fact is when you have motherfucker who freaking has their ne has a nigga's la a billionaire's last name printed on their ass. Nigga, what the fuck? That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but hey, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. It's been your boy Homer Ziggy signing out. Stay positive, keep the vibes up. I'm out.